My name is Ludmila Stern and I come from the former USSR, from Moscow. When I came to Australia, um, I started working after a while as an interpreter and translator uh, with a, a language combination of Russian and English. Today's class was Model 5105, Conference Interpreter. It's actually the first semester that we have these facilities. This is a properly equipped conference interpreting room. And if you remember in the middle, there was a board table for the delegates who can speak in the microphones and listen to the interpretation through headphones. And you can start interpreting. Now what I suggest you do, um, who speaks first, Tom or Donna? In the conference room, in the plenary session during a break, you can hear everything I'm saying, even if I don't want you to hear it. So this is something that an interpreter should always remember. Never leave your microphone on outside session. To be an interpreter means, doesn't mean that you just happen to speak two languages. You have to have a high level of intellectual curiosity and then have to uh, be interested in various um, areas. There are controls for two interpreters. They listen to the speaker through the headphones and they interpret into their language through the microphone. So for example, if one of the delegates uh, does not understand English, then the interpreters in the Chinese booth or in the Russian booth interpret every speech or everything that is being said in English into this language. How did the interpreters find it? Find the experience? Um, I think not cracking under pressure, especially in a class like this, and remembering the right vocabulary um, and remaining professional, because if you fail, then you're not going to get a job again. The majority of our students, I would say, are in their mid-late twenties, sometimes in their early mid-thirties. Occasionally we get older people, uh, which is also fine. One of our former students, um, who is actually now a practicing French interpreter sent me an email from Colombia. Her second language was Spanish, saying that everything I have learned in model 5105, I am now applying in a real setting. And I was very pleased to hear that, that what we have been doing here has a very um, has a practical application. This is what happens in, in real life. Our students are diverse. Uh, some come from Asian countries and speak Asian languages such as uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Indonesian. We have um, students coming from Europe and they are speakers of European languages such as Russian, French, German, uh, Spanish. They come from South America. Students in our master programs should be able to speak and write two languages at a higher level. So if you just happen to speak another language, that's not going to be enough. Well, for example, we would um, first of all ask you whether you have been studying a foreign language uh, formally, whether you have ever traveled overseas uh, for, for the exchange, what your results were. Uh, if in doubt, we would ask you to undertake an admission test, which is uh, to test your aptitude in your foreign language. I really feel good when the communication goes smoothly through me. So sometimes in a conference room, I am the only young female person sitting in the room. The around me, there were like um, gentlemen in, you know, with gray hairs in their 50s and 60s. They all rely on me to communicate. So that was kind of, wow, this is, this is really good. It's very exciting. You learn all the time. You get to travel.